this could very well end his career. It took tough convincing as it was for him to get in in the first place, but he did. Had to have essentially teammates come forward to speak on his behalf, that he's changed, that he, he's willing to change. He, he's outward in, in bringing up the depression that he's dealt with over the course of his career. It's very brave of him to speak outwardly about a topic that's not often discussed. I think we can all have a reasonable conversation about marijuana and it, it, especially when you sort of like you, you look at the medical realities of you know marijuana versus opiates it's it's a joke it's it's not it's an absolute joke that opioids which are highly addictive and kill people in fact believe that opioids are the number one killer of americans in terms of drug use number one more overdoses there's obviously no documented cases of overdosing on marijuana it has incredible medicinal effects a lot of which could help nfl players a lot of which could help for depression um like, these are all reasonable conversations, but at the end of the day, Randy Gregory knew what he was getting himself into. He agreed to the bylaws of the conditional reinstatement. The NFL, behind the scenes, has overextended itself in terms of being more lenient on marijuana usage. That is, that's, that's a fact. The NFL, this year, became much more lenient on marijuana, but he agreed to the reinstatement policies which said he had to do all these things and if he, he you know messed up any of those things that's a separate conversation from the notion that it's kind of ridiculous that marijuana is marijuana is viewed as negatively as it is in the national football it, it changes everything right because you look at the priorities for this team into the offseason and they were certainly offensive and defensive line they were certainly tight end wide receiver and probably safety right the defensive line, I think a lot of us were looking at the interior of that defensive line. And though they could certainly use more depth at pass rusher, that when you have Demarcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory and then whatever Taco Charlton can give you and Dorrance Armstrong, like that, that's fine. But you have legitimate bookends at those positions. Now you don't. Now you've just got one and then a bunch of question marks on the other side. Right? So we've seen Tyrone Crawford play well at the other side, but he's best on the interior as an interior rusher. So... I mean, I, I don't know how this can't alter their offseason plans. I mean, obviously they wanted to re-sign Demarcus Lawrence. This puts in an even greater need on, um, you know, on going to sign Demarcus Lawrence. Um, and look, this is why this is why you pay guys like Demarcus Lawrence the money that they command because they're reliable, because they're really dominant and reliable. Whereas you take chances and risks like the Cowboys have with David Irving and with Randy Gregory, it can blow up in your face because you planned around those guys being available. When they're not available, all of a sudden, now you've got to figure out what the contingency plan is. Now the Cowboys have addressed needed pass rusher beyond just Demarcus Lawrence because they don't have a secondary pass rusher. That was Randy Gregory coming off the best year of his career 